anticipated having a series of public hearings or, or how, how what other than just putting it out there, what yep. how, how do we present the budget? You, did, you have what you have at least one public hearing. I would expect at least one work session uh, with council to actually go through uh, and and address the major components of the budget. For example, how much are we going to dedicate to pothole repair or and you know, again, just being realistic in year one, you know, I wouldn't over promise and under deliver. It's, it's, you're not going to have a lot to do uh, many big capital projects in your first year. Mm -hmm. uh, but there will be public input. Uh, the hearing is about 30 days in advance. Anyone's welcome to look at that and comment uh, to <coughs> those, their representatives or us as staff uh, to do so during that time period. And the budget. The budget process is fluid. It can change throughout that 30-day period. It usually does. With 30, will this be a rush period for, for public input, or, or will this be a 30-day? I mean, no, it, it's definitely 30 days. Okay. Um, that's that's why just if nothing else, the law is not going to let you do this before February. Right. Uh, so that's going to be the revenue sources that um, that start growing, but we don't like them to follow. Two significant ones, which amounts for at least 25-30% of your normal revenue structure. Uh, one of which is the Georgia Power Franchise Check. Uh, that money is usually distributed the last week of February. Dunwoody negotiated with Georgia Power to get 10 months of that in their first year instead of waiting until February. But by the 10th month, our property taxes were coming in. We didn't need the cash at that, at that point in time. So it really didn't, you know, looking back and knowing what we know now, that didn't really help us any, but it was a comfort level knowing that we had that extra money. But that was, that's one. Uh, the other is an insurance premiums tax. The insurers within across the state, the all states, the state farms, et cetera, they remit a tax to the state commissioner's office, uh, insurance commissioner's office. That money is collected throughout the year. At the end of the year, uh, September, October, the uh, insurance commissioner's office will make a distribution based on the city's population proportional to the state's population. It's not based on what's collected within your jurisdiction. It's based solely on your population as of the 2010 census. Uh, that process means we have to get to the Census Bureau to actually determine what our population was in 2010. Uh, but that, that takes a couple months as well. We'll work on that. But by October of 2014, we'll get our first insurance premiums tax check, and then it'll be annual from there, then on out. Um, um, we talk about the revenues. We'll be getting some this year and next year. But what about the expenses um, for say public work on potholes and paving and, and other other types of maintenance issues for that. Um, we wouldn't be engaged in a full year of that initially, right? So we wouldn't be budgeting for a regular year of paving or potholes. And also, like the parks, we don't pick those up until the fall. We won't be, we'll still be paying the cap for the maintenance of those, but our, you know, I just want to make sure that the first year services budget um, it's staggered as well, of course it is, but, but can you just talk a little bit about that, how, how we, um, what per, not percentage, but what level of service you expect for things like police um, and paving or pop over there, things like that, in your first year? Probably the best thing I can do is kind of mirror what happened the last time at the Cap City Incorporated. I, I I recognize holy we're we're not done with you. We don't want to be done with you. But our revenue streams are very similar. Uh, and our operating expenditures are going to be therefore similar because you're going to match the two up. Uh, um, we did no major paving projects in our first year. We had a, a couple hundred thousand earmarked for pothole repairs and there was a significant pothole that just couldn't wait and needed to be addressed. We did so, and we told everybody up front that it's going to take a couple years before we can start doing this. And then we delivered on that promise in years two and three, now four. Um, in first year, I, you know, I wouldn't expect much capital 
to, to, to be able to go out there and do a lot of road projects, or even a lot of the, the smaller pothole repairs that have been there for the last five to 10 years, just getting worse. Um, as for the police staffing levels, uh, we'll, you know, we can look at, based on the, the IGA that's agreed upon with the, the county and how soon we need to ramp up and at what levels we need to ramp up. And a lot of that's gonna come into play um, once we know what the other services are gonna cost, what the IGAs, what the counties are. And I, I just think it would be a little premature to speculate until we know what those contracts are. Sure, um, but kind of has been relevant to what we have tonight with the public works we're gonna be considering that contract. Um, uh, is there a, uh, not comparison, but say you do, I mean, we, our, a number of potholes are going to be tied, how many are going to be fixed to be tied to the contract reward of public works? Correct? So, you'll have to set those expectations with the contractor as well, will we not? Well, exactly. We'll, you know, we'll approach the contractors and say, you know, based on where we see ourselves in year one, this is what our expectations are, what's an appropriate staffing level for those expectations. Um, you know, and, you know, it's, it's okay to amend a contract at a later date to add additional staff when you have additional resources to do additional work. Uh, I'd rather start conservative right. and then build up than realize you've got so much staff but nothing to do with that staff. Right. Right. I have a question for you, Chris. Uh, during this transition period, changeover from the county to the city, um, um, what, what can we do to make sure that we know, so to say, leave money on the table, you know, that the things that we talked about was this occupational tax uh, notice to our businesses in the area. Are there any other things out there that, that we can do to make sure that we capture the revenue in anticipation of being up to speed and in operations? Uh, the biggest thing that we can do is make sure that we don't miss our deadlines. Um, that's a part of it. For example, the, the 17th, we know that's the day when we're going to take over services. We need to make sure we're ready to go on the 17th um, and make sure that infrastructure is in place, that we get the forms, the, the labor, etc., is there ready to operate 8 a.m. on that first day that we can. Um, now, once that part's done, then you've got other processes in, that you could implement to identify. Uh, additional revenue streams. Uh, when we incorporated in Dunwoody, we found in first year, we found 400 businesses that had not previously been uh, licensed with DeKalb County. They weren't dodging the system. They just didn't understand they needed to do something like that. We reached out to them, identified who they were. Uh, they you know, apologetic and fully cooperative said, you know, we just didn't know where, what do we need to do. Uh, you know, we will, uh, we being the, the finance and admin staff, will take on that role and work to start identifying those companies. Uh, one example that, uh, that we did and we'll do here is the junk mail that you get on a regular basis. Uh, there are companies that sell those mailing lists. Uh, we went and bought them. Uh, it was a little under $800. That list generated over $200,000 of revenue. Uh, including one business that owed forty thousand dollars. So there's there's small immediate things that you can put in place to start identifying those companies down the road. And you know whether it be billing permits, we can make sure that we communicate our billing permit data with the tax assessor's office for those additional uh, assessments that need to go on to the bill. So uh, things like that. Also, having a clear handle and inventory of all the fees that the county charges, uh, whether they're doing impact fees or any special assessment fees that were collected based on the community of Brookhaven, that we would want to capture those fees and, and have them come back to the city. So we'll be looking for any kind of uh, unique type of fee that is not customary to everybody that files for a building permit or such a good occupancy or trade permits. There might be other special fees or even special assessments, maybe on sidewalk improvements or whatever that might be. But we need to look and understand their entire fee schedule. Right. I think they're going to be belong to the city. Does the Delaware Police Department, if you know, 
have a fingerprinting process where they charge a fee for that. Yeah. So do they allow this like per <clears throat> permits to carry? You gotta go down to Memorial Drive to get your fingerprint. Uh, I wonder if that's something that can be done in the municipalities. For the I, I, I think I'm, I'm not sure if we do it for purposes other than our own needs, such as the pouring permit for alcohol. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know if we do it outside of that. Uh, I'm not saying we can't, I just don't know if we are. True. So, one more question. With fines and forfeitures being such a big portion of our, our revenue stream, is that something that we'll be able to start uh, receiving on the 17th? But, I, I guess most of that is taken, is taken, is that correct? Almost all of it. Yeah. So those ticketing, those tickets that are written by the Cap County and the interim building, we have our IGA, will those along the same thing start coming into the city? I don't know what what date, but it will be before the IGA expires. It had it happened pretty early in that way. I think we have to notify, I don't know, <coughs> the municipal court is I three days out is up and running, is that right? Uh, Mayor, I believe that they're going to be ready about February the 1st. <clears throat> the uh, part of the IGA with the police is going to be to uh, work out the methodology where the Kiev Police Department uh, books all their tickets in the U.S. That's what they're going to be done with. And uh, the Kiev officers are going to be working with us. And that has to happen before the times of politics, right? Well, theoretically, you could go and sit and ask for the fines and forfeitures out of the reporter's court, but by the time <coughs> by the time they worked out the system of their cost of collection for you, I'm sure that they wouldn't be in there. So the way to get it is to send it your way. This is a good example of a lesson learned in Dudley. We knew we wanted to do court eventually, but we didn't think we were going to have it until we set up the police department. One day, officers just started showing up with boxes of tickets saying, where do you want them? Uh, you know, lesson learned, you know, we know that's coming, and so we're going to hear up the court before that day knowing that those tickets are going to start coming in. Do you know when the IGAs will be um, available as far as budgetary? Uh, I'd have to defer to Bill on that one. We're, we're working on the IGAs, and we're really going to try to do the easy ones first. You know, the, the things that, that we, there's, there's not a lot of problems on. But I would, I would think that we will be doing, we'll be working on the police, at least in starting on that in the second week in January. We, uh, they're going to want to bring us the tickets in. Uh, and, but, and they'll continue to work whether we have an IGA or not because they'll work under under the uh, provisions of the charter uh, with, with or without an IGA. But the IGA is really uh, a, a document that tries to quantify what the cost is going to be so everybody knows and everybody can prepare for it. And it's a plan and activity rather than a, a litigated activity uh, at the end of the day to try to determine where the costs are. Yeah, I, I believe that with the amount of cooperation that we've been getting from the Cap County on every single subject that we've had, uh, that we'll be able to do a lot of work in some time. But well, we're, uh, the police takes back January 1, right? Of course, we're paid up till the end of December. So doing it the second week into the new year, it means that we're already under the offices of whatever it is they're going to charge us. Correct. And we don't know what that's going to be like. The, the, the default is the actual cost. Mm -hmm. And the actual cost is uh, the kind of thing that Mr. Pike figures out. And uh, uh, Google, that's one of the, that's one of the, uh, and, and I can be sure that the folks at Camp County help figure that out the actual cost. And that's what you have to negotiate is what, what is the, what's included in a cost you, are you paying for the SWAT team? You probably are. Are you paying for the narcotics investigators? What proportion of share are you doing? Um, all the different items, uh, how much of the overhead you're paying for in terms of the, the, the command structure. And those are the kinds of things that get down to finding out what your true price is. It's, it's, it's not the direct cost of a policeman in a car, but you can pretty much figure that one out. But it's, it's the embedded cost of the infrastructure that's spread across the county and how much 
that you take on is your share. Do you have anything else? No. I just want to I'm sorry. Last question. I bet this is a follow up. So, so just a quick calculation. I'm thinking this bond support is about $100,000 a month of revenue for the, for the city. Um, what, I don't want us to slow that, that revenue stream down. So you're saying that as soon as we do that's when the municipal court is open. Is that correct? That's correct. And where and what steps do we need to take before? Will we be able to meet that, that February 1st deadline? Uh, there, there's nothing else that the council needs to do. We've approved the contract to award uh, court services for right. uh, We've got a meeting with them tomorrow to discuss specific specifics on the court startup. Uh, I would not envision a February 1st meeting a problem, uh, but we'll confirm that with them when we talk tomorrow. Ms. Tennant's mix, though, is the last piece. We got visited that on yesterday, and we went through we went through the components of it and what kind of build out it needed to be. And there is there may be two walls and some 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 significant painting. But the but the build the truly the build out part of it they can they can get it done. It's, I don't see it. One thing um. This is not the kind of the way you just said about the you know, fines of court. I would just want to make caution us <clears throat> that we don't become reliant in a big way on fines and forfeitures in our budget. It's not something that I, I don't want to build our city on, particularly people. So um, I just don't want. I want that to be a low count on that, you know, number last. Well, just to kind of lay that groundwork, you you want rev, you want the fine revenues to be whatever they end up being. Right. Um, you know, no police chief worth his way is going to have quotas or right. kind of mandates as to what that that ends up becoming. Uh, you're going to have Nazis, and you're going to have some that don't write any. Uh, it all evens out at the end, but you know, they take it. They are what they are. The the really only. Uh, discretion on that revenue level would be what uh, fine amount the judge and the court clerk establish for each of the citations. Okay. Um, thank you, Chris. Um, next briefing on the cab rec kind of recreation bond and bill. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have one. Well, Lenny Felton and Lenny was, is going to give you an overview of uh, what he, he has to tell you about the recreation bond in the cab counties. Position of it uh, at this point. Um, I don't know how detailed you want to go in. Um, if you could just talk about on the high level of where, where the county's position is, and, and uh, so they can be informed because that, that was really a question. Okay. Back in, I guess, it was 2006 2007, um, the cab issued uh, bonds for uh, recreation bonds and um, uh, they had uh, detailed what they were going to do with that money and, and the documents that were spent that they said how much they're going to spend on, on what park. Um, for example, somebody there, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, $12 million or $14 million a day earmarked towards Brooklyn Park. Um, when the legislature passed the, the new law two years ago uh, about purchase of parks by new municipalities, part of the law, besides that you, know, you pay $100 an acre for the park, is that there, if there's any funds uh, specifically paid by the citizens of that jurisdiction made out of debt, the county of the park bought, that whatever remainder that had not yet been used was to be turned over to the municipality. So under that division, we had requested what we saw as the remainder, about $7 million. Um, and uh, of course, we, as we anticipated, the cab said, no. And of course, their um, stance on it is, there were a number of earmarks specifically for any specific part. We were generally made that part, but that's what it was being compared to. Oh, um, and so that was part, part of it. The other part of it is over special. Um, so we had initiated a litigation 
testified that they would have to on this particular book run bond, what part of bond is this book run bond. Many of you could point out to them what, what they might anticipate rather than what, what, what Doug Lee is doing. If, if they want to go forward and start exploring what the, what the potential is for uh, using recreation bonds on parks that they may purchase, what would you see is the method of where they have to go to get to the place to go ask the, ask the county this money is Well, in person, you have to purchase the parks first. Uh, this that money doesn't come to you under the law until you own the park. So purchasing the parks is rather simple uh, for the law. You send them a letter saying, I want this park, here's a check for it. Um, and by definition, as soon as you send them the money and they deposit it, uh, you own the park. And they're required by law to you know, file the deeds. Another issue is that we found a couple of parks there. Is there not a formula where you can take the <coughs> property taxes? Tax bills people have been paying interest on the bonds in this city and extrapolate out how much we would be entitled to? It doesn't, it didn't work that way in the recreation bonds. There, there's documents that, that, that we knew existed uh, that literally, when they were advertising for these bonds, the CEO at that time sent out a bunch of different things saying, We're going to spend this much on this part, this right. much. They basically enticed people in areas like that in the to vote in favor of these bonds with the expectation that a certain amount of money of that fifty, sixty million dollars was going to be used on uh, recreational facilities in their jurisdiction. <coughs> so it's not based on population and there's no real formula. It's you have to well, pick up if you're if you're going by what they promised, then they gotta you need to hold them to what they promised or you gotta find another way to Yes, but isn't there a dispute over uh, what was promised? That's what I'm saying. saying. Now that it's not in right, if that wasn't part of the official documents of the bonds? Well, I guess that's the disagreement that we have with that. So we, we said so that's still in litigation. Oh, yes. Three years later. Mm -hmm. okay. So you're saying we've got to use their documents saying what they promised, but they're saying that those aren't good. Well, then why can't we follow that and say it was proportional to what we're paying in taxes? Well, because that's not the way that the law reads it. The law says whatever the money was earmarked specifically for the recreational facility you purchased, right. they own it. Do we know how much? Do we know how much was earmarked for facilities in the book haven? I don't have that list. I don't, I don't know if, uh, what amounts exist to. How we get those? My ballpark was $15 million or so. You have to. Uh, there's a whole collection of documents you have to basically look for. I'm not sure exactly how the $7 million figure came up. Um, I don't know if Chris and they should be dealing with looking at over their finances. Um, I know that uh, a lot of the uh, council members in Dunwoody have long been on the case and looking at uh, so they've been very proactive. So these documents, where, where do we get them? This the prospectus of the bond, which is a, the, uh, you have to ask for the that's, they weren't they weren't in the the official statement of the bonds. The uh, they statement. weren't in either the, the preliminary or the official statement. These were uh, reports that were put out uh, by the cabs uh, staff and CEO that showed how they expected the bonds to be allocated and used. The documents were, I don't know if it was intentionally distributed or people just got a hold of them, but there were several, including some of Dunwoody's first council members, that had copies of these documents. So when the, and the, uh, whether it was to hold them accountable, because I don't think they envisioned what they'd be eventually used for, uh, but they had copies of these documents for the parks that were going to be used in Dunwoody. So um, the, I haven't looked at the documents to see if they list all the cab parks, but I would suspect that they did one, they probably did all. And they're out there. Just gotta track them down and find them. Can we do a free re make request on that? Or? Uh, yes. You know, Anything right. to do with any of the parks? That can be done, yes. That, uh, we, we have done that as well. The, the amount of documents we received back can be contained in less than this law. 
for you to die. Yes. Okay. We had this Sounds like it's a pretty easy request for them to fill. Yeah, they, they say they have nothing. Um, <laughs> we had to literally file the lawsuit and give them a bunch of discovery documents that take them and then they'll take a position now that we're coming up with this actual. Well, if we can just, rather than how we're doing that, Woody, if we can, right. if, if we can structure what you would suggest that we would do here at Brookhaven, right. I'd rather. I mean, you can do an overdraft request for all the documents that they have released uh, regarding the location of bond. Not just official bond statement, but any news report that we can do a Google search too. Uh, yeah, but you want the official ones. Or I want to see what they'll give you as far as the same I, data that you got? Um, Possibly. Uh, obviously, there are different parts, and we specifically asked for book runs, so... Well, rather than blame the point, I, I, th I think we know the money's out there, and we know there's going to be a, a, a hassle getting it. What I'd like to do would be to, to have staff put together something that we um, uh, can bring it to an agenda at some later date so we can authorize them to vigorously right. pursue those funds, um, you know, come up with a plan, and, and we can talk mm -hmm. around it tonight. But let's, let's put it on a later agenda. Uh, let's recognize that they're there and that we want to pursue them. But let's ask them, ask staff as part of the IPA to see you know, what the best course of action is and, and uh, approve that somewhere. You know, the on that um, you're looking for staff to identify the strategy and identify the means in which to secure right. all those documents, any and all. And, and that information, right. and, and, and you know, to the extent possible, you know, what's the number? Um, and if there's a chance that you know, we can plug some of that in the budget, then and, um, uh, I think that the Governor's Commission Parks Committee has explored this area in great detail. Tonight. Can I open it up to uh, tell you were on the committee, would you? And isn't that something that y'all have looked into? Something? Yeah, we've got some documentation stuff. <coughs> so yeah, I don't mind get too far. Get in touch with you just bought your trunk number where we're talking? No. no. So I, I think we've got a great resource Absolutely. with the Governor's Commission. And Saturday morning you'll be receiving the court presentation. Right. Okay. And in your IGA negotiate, have you brought this up at all with them? No. Do you think it'll <laughs> cause some consternation if you did? Or? Uh, Mayor, I think that uh, I, I was, the reason I was asking the committee to be prospective because I, I think he can, he can outline the path. Well, like I was saying before, you have to purchase the parts first. Sure. Just about the massive on my day and say we don't. Need well, I mean, because we're not, if we don't purchase the parts first in a few months, I mean, because there's, there's got to be some things we should be doing before that. So. We'll, what we can do, what we can do is we, we're going to gather all the information that we have from our, our folks at the Governor's Commission. And we'll start gathering other information so we can find it in terms of, of the kinds of data. We, we have some experience in the where to look for it, and we'll continue to work on that. And then then we, we certainly can talk to the county about it. But we know what their position is at this point in time, and uh, we'll, we'll gather the evidence for it. There are many sources that I'm just the finance department, the plan and documents, capital improvement plans that the county developed that would assign how certain improvements would be paid for, what sources of funds. So we could certainly look for that too. And we'll develop that and, and develop it in a report form and present it at a later council. Okay. <clears throat> just the reason we you know, this is on the agenda, so because we have a meeting Saturday with our parks committee and we wanna we want to be brief before we Brief them on anything we know. So that's the thank you for coming. Thank you all for um, Next, any reports or presentations on community development? I guess we do have some. What time is it? It's um, six. So we're starting a little bit early. All right. So who's first? The collaborative? You want to keep uh, work, please, call it, please. I'll. <laughs> oh, I have a question uh, to Mr. Riley. Is there any reason that you all need to be here? Could I suggest that, that you all uh, could better spend your time when you were here for our meeting? Why do you do that? Well, do you do that? Should we just say that? Yeah. And we have a type, so we can help us all. All right.
okay with y'all? I'm going to pick you out.